Um, I'm curious about uh, two things that uh, you've been involved in recently. First of all, working for the European Space Agency, and second of all, um, uh, working on developing the principles of relational frame theory, which is a behavior theory of how human language, human thinking works. I'm curious, uh, uh, do these areas overlap? Do you see any uh, influence of the recent developments in how we understand human cognition? on uh, how you are trying to work with uh, uh, the European Space Agency. What is your purpose there? And uh, how do you see your influence over people that you've been connected with? Well, it's a good question. And uh, you know, the first answer is yes, I see RFT and the applied aspects of contextual behavioral science, including ACT. Uh, to be very much at one. And uh, there have been recent uh, developments over the past year, year and a half in RFT and in how we have been, my team at uh, Goldsmiths College at the University of London have been uh, kind of evolving ACT and some of the applied aspects of um, contextual behavioral science some of which have stemmed from our Olympic work, but that we have been certainly applying in our work with the European Space Agency or ESA. And what we've basically been seeing is that people um, act for a purpose. That is that the thoughts and the feelings that they have serve as guides uh, to how the they're living their life to um, whether or not they feel that they're on the right track, going in the right direction, and that they can use these feelings, these thoughts, these internal sensations to help to see what may be important to them in who they want to be. Uh, that is a, a great athlete or a good astronaut or a good communicator, a good worker in general, and what they need to do in order to accomplish or work towards those aims. So I think one thing that unites both some of the developments in RFT and in the work that we've been doing with ESA and with their astronauts and their mission control people is to say, hey, look, the thoughts and the feelings you have are not something to be distanced from, to be diffused from, to be changed in any way, but that we want to change how you relate to them so that you can ask them, you know, to what degree are these um, telling us something? It's almost like using the thoughts and the feelings that you have as a GPS in your car. You know, the, the GPS may be a good guide as to how to get from one town to another. And to ignore that may be very, very silly. Now, you would not want to put your complete faith in a GPS system because you may end up in the middle of a field. But nevertheless, um, to ignore them would be probably not a great idea. And indeed, the research that we've been doing with ESA and with others have shown that when people are attuned to how they're thinking and how they're feeling, they're more likely to act as the individual that they wish to be. That is, as a person who is a um, good astronaut, who wants to relate well with people, who wants to connect with them, uh, who wants to work well in whatever it is that they're doing. And I think that um, those, uh, that has been a big change in the way that we're using contextual behavioral science in organizations. And I think that's very much reflective of the developments that we've seen in RFT in terms of their row model of RFT. So that is their relating, orienting, and uh, kind of establishing further uh, ways of working uh, in order to create meaning 
and understanding in uh, one's life, whether that understanding is, um, you know, what does this word mean, or how do I get from A to B, or what type of person do I see myself as, and what will give me a sense of importance or significance in my life. So what you're saying is that instead of either trying to avoid, run away from one's thoughts or emotions, or on the other hand, being like 100% influenced by whatever is inside you, uh, act in organizations, promote the stance of being able to treat your inner content as a maybe suggestion, as an idea to follow, but only if it serves the purpose of an individual person. So you can be more selective with how to interact uh, with what's happening inside of you. Yes, so how to interact um, with what's inside of you and what it's saying. And it may be that um, the purpose, I mean, that, that brings up another good issue. And that is that in ACT, a lot of times we have, um, we, we kind of predetermine, as it were, the values and the goals that we have. And I think that that's probably a mistake um, in the sense that it's very difficult to know what it is one values, what it is one wants to um, kind of accomplish until you get stuck in and are actually doing it. So, you know, we, we don't know what it's like to be an astronaut. We don't know what it's like to be an elite performer. We may not even know what it's like to work in a particular job, in a particular organization, until we're actually doing it. And therefore, um, the thoughts and the feelings that we have through actually doing and engaging in something will lead to feelings that may inform what it is that we think may be important to us. So I think that in, in a way, you have to do something. You have to take action, be open to the consequences that you receive when doing those actions. And by being open like that, you're more likely to see over time what it is that's important to you, what it is that's meaningful to you, and what you want to work for.